So um, we will then begin with um, public comments, if there is any. And at this, at this point, we have to ask the folks who are remote if they would like to say anything or indicate that they would like to speak by raising their hand. His hand. Um, is there anyone who would like to make any comments? Or just joining as an observer? Hello, my, my name is Michael Curtin. I'm I'm just joining as an observer. Uh, so, if you have any comments and um, we can't hear you, if you're making them. Okay, I was just saying that I'm just joining. I'm just joining as an observer. No worries. No worries. You know, Michael is checking out whether it's the historical. And I'm participating in, so I uh, started when I was excited. Good to see you, Michael. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> nice to see you. Okay. Are there any comments from those in attendance other than the items on the agenda? All right. Great. Then we will just move along here. Um, the next item is the chair's report. We do not have a chair's report tonight. And following that, our approval of minutes, and we also do not have any minutes to approve. So we will move on to the fifth item, which is the review of the proposed cupola removal pursuant of the, um, to the Historic Preservation Restriction Agreement for 20 Hollow Street, the Holly Apartments, former St. John Fantias. And the members of the commission have received a copy of um, a letter that was submitted uh, earlier this month that describes um, the rationale for removing as well as the engineer's report. That was excellent to get all of that. And um, we also have a proper uh, copy of the preservation restriction with its attachments to see what um, is recommended for uh, proceeding with a request like this. So uh, we have representatives here from O'Connell, yes. Sarah. Yes, nice to see you. So I Doing great. Yeah, it's a lot to juggle. Thank you, Sarah. The asphalt shingles are on the new Yeah. Um, did, would would that be useful for folks to see that? Um, you know what the belt. You know, um, Sarah, would you have any 
images of the building with uh, sort of um, from a distance showing the Kubla when it was in place in relation, like where it was in the relationship to all the other, to the tower and the roof. And uh, that would be, I think, helpful. <clears throat> Yeah, those are those are helpful. And the okay. Right. So I think that um, did everyone have a chance to look at Sarah's letter? I think it outlined pretty clearly what some what the issues were as well as the engineering report. Um, and so our charge here is to um, review the preservation restriction language. And um, you know, we're really being asked to approve, which would be considered a major change alteration for the terms of this restriction. Um, so um, does anybody have any questions for Sarah before we talk about it? Um, any clarification that you need? Was it clear from her letter why it's, it's questionably as to whether it should remain? Um, just it's still on the site, or has it been removed? It's been removed. Um, it's been on the That's right. You told us that last time. Okay. Yeah. In terms of um, a historic period um, and architectural detail, would you consider this to be in line with? the larger structure in terms of any thoughts about that? Um, I mean, the characteristic of this church. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the cupola, like a lot of other towns look at don't have a cupola like this. Some of the more power in the commercial So um, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to look at the preservation restriction, um, but uh, in the language of it, um, they do it does talk about uh, the alterations, and I just I didn't bring my glasses with me, so bear with me if I stumble over this. Uh, I'm just going to read this section. Um, of the terms that talks about alterations just so everyone understands what we're basing our decision on. Or, yeah. The grantor agrees that no alterations shall be made to the exterior of the building or premises unless A, clearly of minor nature and not affecting the characteristics which contribute to the architectural, archaeological, and historical integrity of the building and premises, or B, the city has previously determined that it will not impair such characteristics after reviewing plans and specifications submitted by the grantor. So that's one thing that I think we should um, consider and talk about. And then the other thing that I um, noticed in this, um, in Exhibit E, which talks about the restriction guidelines, and they're talking about major changes to the exterior of the building. Um, they, it says, large-scale repair or replacement of cladding or roofing, changing, change involving in, inappropriate removal of addition of materials or building elements, such as removal of chimneys or cornice detailing, installation of architectural detail, which does not have a historical basis, altering or demolishing building additions um, would be considered a major change. but. It does also, um, at the very end, what I would consider a caveat, 
Changes classified as major alterations are not necessarily unacceptable. Under the preservation restrictions, such changes must be reviewed by the city and their impact on the historic integrity of the premises assessed. And I think that's where we really are with this. I think Sarah has taken a very um, thorough approach to, and thoughtful approach to um, the condition of this element, um, uh, the um, importance of it and retaining the strongest uh, integrity of the building. And I think that, in my opinion, that's what we need to be considering whether this change is going to have a major impact on the architectural significance of this structure and the surrounding premises. So that's what I'd like to hear you talk about. Any thoughts? Yeah, um, I think the question before us is whether to put it back or not. It's already been removed and the language of the restriction is about removing it. And so that third clause on page three, um, required by casualty or other emergency promptly reported to the city. It seems like this was a kind of emergency situation, right? That it was not going to, rot was discovered, it was not going to be stable, it had to be removed. You informed the city right away, you came and talked to us last month. So we're in a little bit different situation, which is that that's already happened, that's over. <laughs> and so I think as I was weighing this, I was thinking, okay, what is the requirement to put it, to fix it up, which is going to be costly, um, but which also was aided by a Community Preservation Act grant, which is in part what those are for, is to pay for post costly historical rehabilitation. Um, and if so, under what terms and on, on what um, timeline? Um, and that's a kind of gray area for me. Um, I think the preservation restriction does have these sort of like internal, um, uh, what can you say? There's different ways you could read the language of the um, preservation restriction. It does very clearly say that any time you evaluate any of these decisions, the tool that you're supposed to use is the Secretary of Interior standards. So that's um, number nine standards for review on page five. Uh, and if we think about the Secretary of Interior standards, we have things like original materials should not be removed, right? That character defining features should be maintained. Um, those sorts of things. So um, I guess that's a little bit of where I'm at, how I see it right now, was that we, was this, in economic terms, it's this really unfortunate contingency um, that was not budgeted for or planned for. In uh, on-site work, it was um, a, an emergency type situation that had to be remedied. And now the question is, what happens next? Um, so, as I look at it, I went back, I looked at the HSR, the earliest photo, I think we talked about this last month too, looks like it's 1954, at least in the HSR. Um, I don't think there's much about the building in the form B or in the National Register nomination for Pomeroy Terrace or for other places. So we don't have a huge amount of research on this building, but if you look at the 1954 photo, you can see that the cupola is there. Um, the other kinds of things that come up are like, is it a, is it an element from the period of significance? Well, we don't have a named period of significance for this building, but we do know there's a story about the Polish American community and how significant it is for its cultural, ethnic, religious meaning in the community, which would suggest that the period of significance is not just the original architecture, but is through, um, you know, in the in the practice of the field, setting it back 50 years from the date of the nomination. So, I, you know, I look at the cupola as a character defining feature. Um, whether the language on um, exhibit E at the end gives us what we need <laughs> um, to say that it doesn't meet the standards, but it might be permissible or it was removed in emergency condition, but doesn't have to be put back. I, I think that it's it's an important debate for us to, to have. So I, I guess I would say um, we should we should talk about it. And I guess Sarah uh, Lavalley, I would just ask one question of you, which is, are, are there any relevant code kinds of questions, you know, building inspector questions um, or events that are part of the story with respect to, you know, part of the building is at risk, it comes down, you know, does, does the building inspector get involved? Or are there any of those kinds of things that we would 
yeah, want to consider. Not with the replacement building, uh, especially because it wasn't a structural component of yeah. the structural side. Um, and there, there aren't any additional permits. Required. Okay. 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 Yeah, I mean, I'm glad it's it's been saved. <laughs> I'm glad we're having this conversation. I think property owner did the right thing, right, um, to care for it and to store it and to have this conversation. But I, but I think it's tricky. Tricky question. Barbara, do you think that's cool? I, I really didn't think that was very funny and very helpful. You know, towers are more prominent. I, I still consider it. Cost of restoring it was significant, around ten thousand dollars. Is that a figure? No, it's a lot more. Well, more All things considered, I would love to have it back. I agree with both of you, but at that cost, is it possible that maybe members of the community who have a huge history with the Polish Church could throw in funds and have it restored, and then maybe? Um, Reattached if that's possible, but at, I would love to have it back up there. But at cost, it's um, I think too significant to work on right now. I think there's better places that money can be spent. Okay. <laughs> um. I completely understand both points of view on this, and I, um, I guess I'm coming at from it also for, because I'm the uh, representative of the Community Preservation Committee, and we are the entity that funded this by the city, and so we provided city funding for it. Um, and uh, I know what a challenge it was to get this project passed um, in the community. Uh, there was yeah huge amount of community input and it was a very long process to um, save it. I guess I would say, and the building did get saved um, for a long time. It was it seemed like it wasn't going to get saved. Um, so that's one consideration that I have. Um, and the second is just from a design point of view. I don't think that that uh, element is in scale with the rest of the building. Um, that's again, I'm a professional designer, so. Uh, I look at it that way too. I think it's not very visible. Um, it's like it's visible, I guess, if you're standing at this location and looking at it. Um, but I think for most people walking down the street or even better out of their car, um, you know, it's it's pretty hidden. So I feel, and and then you know, given the cost, I think is um, going to compromise the success of could compromise the success of this project, which is so important. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I would say I'm on the fence about it. Hmm. Uh, is it still possible to ask um, questions? Of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, except now I have three things <laughs> in my mind to say. Give me just a second. Let me. I want to phrase my question. Um, just right. Oh, uh, uh, let me see. I'll get, just give it a try. Um, is how long do you think so my question's for Sarah how long do you think the um, rehabilitation of the element itself would take do you have a sense of the like the amount of work it sounds like you have a rough sense a hundred thousand dollars or I mean a lot of money, a lot of money I see. So additional design work as well as real. So this could take a year. It would take 
or months in yeah, any case. Yeah, several months. These okay. Are the first step. That would be interesting. That would be good to say. I do have one question following up on what Steve said. So, to reattach this and make it structurally sound so it doesn't blow up in a hurricane, um, you would have to uh, compromise the roof. The roof can blow, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I think that, I mean, I guess, so there's timing of the, pro there's money for the project overall, there's timing for the project overall, but there's also this question of, you know, it's already down. So I, I don't know if there's an affirmative responsibility to put it back once it's already down. And the condition and the issues involved, I think, um, is also that some of those details are worth us considering it a little closer to. Um, <clears throat> It does seem like in the pro as I, what I just heard you say was that in the process of examining it, beginning to rehab it, uh, getting a closer look at its condition, its instability, that the feature itself, but also its instability on the roof um, became apparent. Yeah. I guess um, the only remaining question would be for all of us, which is um, considering that it's down, considering that it's in storage, um, that the feature itself is intact, it's not on the building. And if it was going to go back, it has to be hooked on. Um, is there any time requirements that we're facing? Um, there's the timing of the project, but if we're thinking about it in terms of this feature in the building, is there any time that the cupola has to go back on the building if we're gonna require that? Um, could that be one year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now? <laughs> um, what, you know, cause it's dead, it's, it's safe. It's not an urgent right. matter in that regard, but it is a question of, does it comply with the restriction or not? And how do we think about, about that? So I don't know, if, Sarah, if you have thoughts on that or if others have, I mean, it would be difficult. I, yeah. Right. You have to pay somebody to hold on to it. I guess, yeah. Right. I mean, that's a not important factor. In terms of the building, it's not really important. It's just that it's not going to be under the terms of the restriction, the commission is somewhat different. Um, yes, and Again, following up on what Steve was asking is, um, you know, is this something that, and you probably can't answer this because you don't have the structural <laughs> ruling on it, but um, is this something that could be restored down the road and put back on, you know, in five years or 10 years or something like that? You know, could the, I don't know, could the CPs 
Community Preservation Committee consider a preservation application for this feature? And I don't know, I'm just thinking of possibilities. Right, or maybe it's stored in the building. I mean, um, yeah. maybe there's a way that it's, it comes back onto the site. The feature itself is not lost, but the decision is deferred until in, in, in the interest of continuing the project, which was so hard fought to get it to, I don't know, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud. If that would improve our neighborhood, would that be something that would fit in the shepherd bar? <laughs> There's nothing preventing the follow up application, right, Sarah? It could be made. <laughs> we just have to figure out what to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Is there any thought from the audience? Have to open up to public comment and curious. For the, because we have a story they have in here, you might as well capitalize on your expertise. This is a tough one. I'm not certain that anyone has done that, yeah. There might be aerials, historic aerials that would show it. That would be the first one. Yeah. No, Lori, you have any thoughts? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I was I was gonna ask Dylan that question tonight actually. Yeah. 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 And then does that include the engineering a little bit on? And here's another question too. Um, if this gets restored or reconstructed and put back up, um, but it, you know, it's a little down the road um, and people are living in this building, how, how's that going to work? Um, we have to figure out the access plan and some access. Um, so, Sarah, you said we have 60 days, right? Correct. And, that, is it it when, and that, that's from the date of your letter, from, from the letter? From Sarah's letter, which was yeah. January 10th? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And 
and not just I guess I am in a split hairs in, to split hairs. <laughs> um, the the request is actually for the permanent removal. So as far as the city is concerned, the temporary removal and our informal conversation after the fact, we said of course you did the right thing. Uh, the the request that's being made is for the permanent. I just can't quite wrap my head about requiring to put it back after it's already okay. Permanent removal of the Right. Okay. So, would it be advantageous to um, see if we can find out some more information about the date of this thing, when it was put on? Um, I know we have a commission member who is works at the Forbes Library with the history collection. He may be able to find some more information for us. Is that okay to ask him for that, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we reconvene again at the end of February. Um, in a, uh, yeah, the end of February. You know, just to gather a little more information, so we have some. Um, we have some more documentation to go on. I, that that's what I would recommend, but I think we need to. Um, so we, I don't know if we, if we we need to vote on a uh, delaying this for a month, Sarah. No, it's still moving. Okay, so no. Okay, so yeah, let's see if we can try to get a little more definitive information. Um, you know, I don't know if you everybody knows Charlie works in the post office in Northampton, but he grew up in that neighborhood and uh, went to that church, and he may know himself, or he may know someone who does know. Like, would Fred? I don't know. Well, he might know somebody, or maybe his parents, right? What about Fred Zomak? Yeah, work in the neighborhood. Okay, that sounds great. Ariel, you may not have looked at Ariel's though, right. um, and those are usually online. Yeah. Our Rotary Club two years ago had a Save St. John's group uh, spoke to us, so reach out to those people and see what information they have. That would be great. And if maybe they're willing to do a, a fundraising to help with the uh, cost. I said ten thousand. I guess was a hundred thousand. I'll leave off. So, um, but the historical significance, I understand. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank and we appreciate all that you're doing there. It looks really great. I went by there today and the copper is so beautiful. I just wish it didn't, you know, fade. It looks so great right now. <laughs> but I know how that is. Oh, what preservation that doesn't love patina? <laughs> I love it. I don't know. It just looks so, uh, so rich. Okay. Um, and related to this item as well, now that I'm sure it's been raised, I only get approved by men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the was already signed late in the and the mayor and the city's right. So this was already voted on by. Right. Uh, so you're, you're in charge of the Okay. Do we need Do we need to take action on that? No, that's already been done. So that was voted on way back in August. I think I remember that. Right. Um, um, so we're Great. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. No, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll know it.
So while that's going around, we'll move on to our next item, which is informal review and discussion of the solar the rooftop solar panels um, for the Shepherd Barn. So, um, Lori and Betty, do you have a presentation you'd like to make, or you sent the model? Yep. Um, no, no, no. Oh, okay, I'll write it. It's just information. On board again. Thank you. Thanks. We'll see you again. Thank you. Hi. So one of our one of our goals is, like the city, to become um, part of the net neutral by 2030. Ask for anybody. Uh, in our case, with our structures. So, but we've been looking, we have a small solar array on one of our buildings, and the donor who is supporting us to have a small solar array now on, on the new addition, a metal new addition to the separate barn rear. So, visually, um, when you approach the historic structure, it looks well as historic as it looks, right? <clears throat> so, and then we worked with um, the designers, and we'll be doing our work with Tim Flannery from Peak Performance to evaluate shrink. We shrunk the size of it a bit so that it makes it more easy to get up. The main thing for us was not to disturb the slate roof. We know that um, it has a, a life, <laughs> it has a term limit, I guess you could say. We don't know exactly what that is yet, but we're watching it carefully. We don't want to disturb it, and so we've offered to put this solar away completely on the back. Uh, we had the opportunity to think about it on the little um, L that we would see from the front, but we decided that wouldn't be right. So it would be exclusively on the And is the, um, the back of the building is on the north side, right? Correct. Is that going to be OK? It's going to work. OK. Well enough. Mm -hmm. OK. Good. I mean, that's great that you can do that. Well, Sarah can put up a new, yeah. you're correct. When, when I was going to come, like Betty and I were going to come to an earlier meeting in December, mm -hmm. at that point, it was shown on the bell as well. And then the other, in addition, we were in that income period, we were able to talk to the <coughs> blooper, but in addition, I reached out to the Mass Historical Commission to um, find out since they could. And since there's no state or federal monies involved, they don't have a say, you. But the other piece for us is that the <coughs> existing conduit that goes under, that's buried on the ground, does not have sufficient space. So we're going to have to bury a new cable. But um, back in the 80s, when that plumbing and electrical the electrical work done. I've seen one in the that Marie had. It's a, it was a big backhoe. And so there's plenty of disturbance. We can use to have that. So anyway, and it will be laid by right next week. But there won't be any. And where does the trench go from where to where? From the Shepherd House to the barn. So the, uh -huh. so the sort of the beautiful thing is it will certainly be all of the electricity to the barn, and then for much of the year, it will also help uh, spray the electrical use. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I can't share it with you. Oh, you went up there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Uh, but it, it basically just moves the panel. And no tree removal is part of that? No, we've done that. <laughs> you could come and see the black birch that we did remove. It's now held up. And it's now the cabinets in the barn. It's pottery for the Wow. Yeah. Oh. So there was a lot of like we also we had a, another tree fall down on another part of the top of the hemlock. We had to all that milk up and stuff that part of the seed birds. So it's you know, it's a lot of nice elements. Some of the old art flooring of what's really neat to help sliding back to one. So that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so that's our just for context and maybe for um, future decision making. Um, when was the PR um, agreed to put in place, and how detailed is it? Like, for instance, does it talk about contributing and non-contributing structures, it's or essentially exactly? Okay, it's sort of the MHC template. Yeah. And, and the barn is a contributing structure. Okay, but this is an addition to it. It's yeah. yeah, and that's attached. That's attached. Okay, exactly. So when we um, with the barn had an edge on it on the front, and we were going to restore it that now, but it was in too poor condition, so it was rebuilt the same size. So mm -hmm. it's in exactly the same place, the same configuration, same size. But we opted to put an addition on the rear, which is more like a shed addition, like a barn would have, mm -hmm. that you don't see from the front. And that's where this proposed would go. And that's where this would go, yeah, okay. on a completely new part. So what will you need from us? Will you need um, any kind of a... Well, maybe a vote would say that you <coughs> reviewed it. Don't yeah, our last agenda item we had this minor and major question. So I think, I'm, you know, I think you, I don't know, Sarah. What do you think? Do you, can you make the argument here that this is minor uh, instead of major, based on its location and the materials impacted and the visibility from the street and those sorts of things? Oh, although I guess in this one we just looked at, there's a list, isn't there? There's a list of things that helps you decide if it's minor or major. So maybe there's guidelines are as they are. So while it doesn't seem like it's all going to be minor, it's going to be major. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So similar process. So those would okay. be forthcoming. When you say a full set, yeah. Of what do you mean by that? <laughs> beyond what <laughs> sketch you got? Uh, so I listed this on the agenda just as a preliminary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I I don't know if there's any photos or any if there's nothing. Well, oh, you're, you're saying? Okay, we should do a little package which has the updated pictures and maybe photographs of what it looks like. Yeah. Um, so and then we'll, okay, we'll write a formal request. We'll yeah. Write Okay. And along, along with anything else. MS Oracle doesn't have to weigh in because you've already talked to them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, at this point, it doesn't sound like there's any issues. It sounds like you've left them all here. Um, we will be spending, like, moving aside from this. <laughs> I was going to say, and then. Any reason yeah. to see these? Yeah. Where we're going to re resubmit um, for the his new historic structures report, et cetera, for the Parsons House. Mm -hmm. And the contractors, we have a little money left over from the old CP grant, so they're going to be getting started in March. And so we're excited, got a whole really great team, and we're excited to get some And then the other piece to it, so Betty and I submitted $25,000. Local council as part of the feasibility study. So, in addition to <coughs> some of the pieces that we had put on, we added 
to look at ADA issues, outside, questions outside of preservation, accessibility, and then also um, a team um, to look at capacity to uh, improve the building envelope or that are but consistent with um, preservation. So like not spray on from higher build. But what what are the what are the options that we have mm -hmm. to anyway, so we have that two pieces that are not under the CPC but are really important part of our thinking about to complement. Mm -hmm. And what about the shepherd house are you going to reapply for that as well? The small I think we should. I think uh, the tenant is going to be leaving in June, right? Which is Mass Humanity, so yes. it will be open at the time we start the study starts. And I think while these experts are here, I'd like to get a preliminary read from them. So if they say we need to extract this report, we need to involve these experts, then I'll be one step ahead of the game for my next grant proposal. Um, you know, to know what exactly I should be looking at. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll look forward to reading them. <laughs> we did. A few of us really advocated for you guys, but you. anyway, we, we'll, we'll, we'll try again next time. It was complicated. It was complicated. You probably saw it. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of requests yeah. last time, and really big ones, and yeah. it was quite a quite a round. <laughs> okay. Great. So we'll look for a little more documentation from you, and then we'll take a formal vote on it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Always great to get oh, your update. Well, we have three great Zoom programs, which I yes, mm -hmm. I didn't have so your contact, but I can't. Good. They all look so good. <laughs> uh, and, and I did try to do the work with the Zoom Zoom Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, 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 2024 is the 150th anniversary of the Milford Flood. And a group of us from the story of Greenway and Williamsburg and everybody in between have gotten, what? Well, and Civic have gotten together to create a number of programs. And the program that most affects you all is a program of a, a landscape story. Is markers on the landscape discussing what happened at each part at sort of at which time. And so I've been writing those, and there are about 75 of those. Wow. And what it's turned out is they're each a, more like a walking tour. So there's one in Williamsburg, um, there's one in Haydenville, and there's one in Leeds, and one of the yeah, sprinkled in in Florence, and I hope to do a few downtown because the coroner's inquest and all that took place there. So um, those will go on both public and private property. So we are talking with the people who hold the private property and the public property. Um, um, first of all, I wanted to get set exactly where I wanted them, and now that I pretty much have that, then we'll be going to everybody again and making sure it works for them. So these things will be up for two months, May and June of this year. Uh, they will be keyed to a GIS map that's taking place in the Landscape Studies Department at Smith. So we will meet over there this mm -hmm. Friday, and um, we return Johnson is having his students put it all on the, the grid or whatever it is they put it mm -hmm. on. It's really terrific. Right. And so you'll be able to access it as you go around and see one of these little signs with the QR code, you can access the whole rest of it. So you could get a QR code and sit home and read them all. That would be fine too. So that's sort of that's sort of that kind of story map, which takes place on the landscape. So there will be about twenty-five or so of them in weeds, right along the street, as well as along the rail trail. So there's going to be about seven or eight on the rail trail. So um, sweet. That sounds great. So, yeah. so I'm going to champion what they're using extraordinary. So we're looking at on the 16th point to work
It's wonderful all that you're doing. It's really inspiring. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Thanks so much for coming in. Okay. Um, so we had two um, determinations of significance um, pursuant to the demolition ordinance to review. And um, my understanding is that the subcommittee members looked at this, these, and the no. um, they didn't look at that. They did not. Oh, okay. I thought that they did, but they no. wanted, okay. So anyway. typically these are reviewed by the subcommittee right. of your 15 days in which to make potential termination and the timing just happened to work out. Got it. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. So um, we are doing this as a group, so just a subcommittee. <clears throat> And I know John is here, and I know that the Fulton Avenue is, I'm sorry, the <laughs> Milton Street is your project, right. right? So why don't we, not so you have to sit around any longer, why don't we talk about that one first? I kind of enjoy it all. What's that? I kind of enjoy the, the first meeting. <laughs> um, this is a property on Milton Street. Uh, it's uh, parcel 30B-109. And... Um, there's uh, my understanding is it's uh, both the house and the garage. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if any of you had a chance to look at it. It is not in the inventory. It's not. I have no information. Yeah. Right. I don't even know when this property, this neighborhood, was developed. Um, the house looks like it's. Just based on its style, it looks like sort of early 20th century, but it's hard to tell. It's a house where the funny, there are other houses on the street to the left of it, around the same exact style. Yeah. Nothing unique about it. It's just that's old. Yeah. So, um, do, well, we, well, the for order of business tonight is to decide whether we um, believe this property should be uh, is significant that's all we're doing we're not uh, voting to um uh, say whether it should be pre it's properly preserved or not it's just to state its significance and that's a tough thing to do because we don't know very much about it um and dylan was not here to fill us in so um when was the application submitted sarah I wonder if we have more time. <laughs> okay, so, and we have 30 days? Just 15, okay. And the city doesn't have any records on it in terms of data construction or permits or tax information or 
we don't have any of that. So the only information that we have from the sector, which is often drastic. Yeah, I know a lot of properties get a default 1900 date. Yeah. And even if, even ones that have a real big list, they're often. Okay. Um, I, I, this is, you know, an extension kind of to space technology in that area, maybe on a Sanborn map from the 1930s. Uh, I looked at all the Sanborn maps, yeah. and this yeah. area is cut on just by a little bit. So the fire insurance company wasn't on it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, um, well, how do, okay, what do people think about this? How do they think we should proceed? What are your thoughts? We don't have enough information. Uh, here, construction and working is the same. That's the I drive by the building every day, and I, you know, I remember talking about this back in November. I don't see that it, it's a very small building that really has. Well, I think that's five Fulton that you're talking about. Okay. We we went to 80 Milton. We have a, I skipped for, over because yeah. John is John is the developer. He's here. Well, let me just uh, before you go any further, let me just talk to you, talk, um, read to you the criteria that we are basing our decision on. There are four items, and this is it. Um, one is that whether the building is or structure is listed on or is within an area listed on the National Register of Historic Places, which it is not. Uh, the building or structure has been found eligible for the National Park Service or Park Service should be National Register of Massachusetts Historical Commission. Um, and it has not been inventoried, so it would not have been able to be found eligible. It has to be inventoried first. Uh, the building or structure is importantly associated with one or more historic persons or events with the broad architectural, cultural, political, economic, or social history of the city or the Commonwealth. When the building or structure is historically or architecturally important in terms of period, style, method of building, construction, or association, or with a recognized architect or builder, either by itself or in the context of a group of buildings. Those, those are the four. Um, okay, so Greg, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, I was going to say that the first two are no. I don't think it has. We, we couldn't find any importantly. Um, Events that uh, structurally it's um, tied to any individual. The most important one. Um, whether it's architecturally or historically important. Yeah. Ava Barbara, do you have thoughts? Yeah, I think a resource like this, the question is, is there a, a historic district or a potential district that the, <coughs> often the individual building um, might be significant because of its context, but we don't have any information about that either. So I think we um, <coughs> can make the decision. It does not meet any of the four criteria in relation to late ones. Um, I, I would agree with that, and I also, it raises a larger subject that I can talk about at the end. Um, so if that is the case, and we don't have any other members of the club here other than John, would you like to say anything? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone would like to make a motion then. And, you know, and the, yeah, the garage was too new for the house. In a second? A second. All right, any discussion? Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Very much. Appreciate your time. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for waiting.
All right, and then finally we have by Fulton Avenue, which is the old gate. I thought we decided this one last month. So, so last time, so this was referred to the subcommittee um, initial plans for the property only proposed demolition of the main, um, you know, the, uh, the office building. Um, so that was determined not to get plans are fluctuating to the site. So that was the Oh, ever, so ever this five Fulton, I think I'm just going to pull up the street view. Is this the old, um, isn't Jerry? Yeah, I sort of feel like we, we covered it all last yeah, week, but, or last month. Yeah. First they were going to keep that. Yeah. 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 And Yeah, I mean, I, I I was surprised um, about the the office building because um, it just seems to have a lot more sort of character than yeah. the garage does. Um, so I would um, be in favor of allowing them to take this down to so determine that it's not it's not significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready to vote. Okay, so someone would need to make a motion on this one. Okay. I'll second. And then, and then any more discussion? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so we will take a vote. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so just uh, other business. This this discussion about the demolition, um, I think, brings up a very important topic for us. And um, the most updated version of the preservation plan um, is in its final, I guess, um, going through its final edits before it will get released to the public. Um, one of the glaring things in it is just the paucity of completion of our uh, inventory. And I think the, the Milton Street property is a very good example where because we don't have any inventory information about it, it's really hard for us to make a really important decision. And the only way to be able to make a decision is to have an inventory completed. So I think that um, once the plan is adopted, or even before, you know, the commission really needs to think about um, galvanizing an effort to get these underrepresented neighborhoods inventory and inventory professionally. Um, so I would like to see that. I don't know whether it's a CPEA application or how we go about doing it, but I think we need to start talking about that. You know, maybe it's something for the fall application round, the CPC. And I um, think now that we have a preservation plan, it would make a compelling plan application for the Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, so we would, you know, we're not going to be able to cover all of it. No, no, no. Certainly. Uh, so we would want to fight it. Yes. And I think the plan, Kathy does it pretty well in the plan, so we'll know where to start. Uh, but this area, you know, where John is doing a lot of redevelopment, I mean, that's. Those are a lot of historic buildings that have not been in the past. So maybe that's where we start, or what we'll see with the plan forward. But I just wanted to put that out there. And, um, you know, if inventory work is done well, it's not cheap. I'll just put it that way. And so we need to be prepared to, you know, ask for a significant amount of money have it done well. But MHC has upgraded their standards or updated their standards for completing inventory work. And it's a lot more detail than it's. Which is good. But 
Keep that in the on the list of things yeah. to do, and um, we'll you know move ahead. The applications from the fall wouldn't be in until the September probably, right? So yeah, and, and, and time. Which I think it also wouldn't be right. And they're not as onerous as MPPI. Yeah. What is the timeline for? Um, oh. We've been talking for a while about a public meeting. For the presentation of the plan, um, any thoughts on when that might uh, so planning happen? The board will likely take the job, yeah. um, and the large company. Okay. Um, and that that would be the first of the part of the So we won't have the. Opportunity to comment or to interact with the consultants. Our our work with them is done. Yeah, this it's, it's fine. Judy was really sick and couldn't be able to. Oh, sorry to hear that. Um, but when she does that, okay. Yeah. yeah, I had an email exchange with her um, in November that I cc'd you on, and she said I'll get back to you. Um, and she never did, so I've been sort of wondering where we are in the process, but also trying to be patient and not. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and at this point, it was too not far push. along in the process to make really substantial. Um, so we they worked on the plan a year ago. So there were some things that were in the last And is it adopt is it is the process that it's formally adopted by council or how does that uh, planning board and then hopefully no, planning board and I see. And planning board. Uh, and it's just up or down. And they they put you know, if they have significant concerns or issues with the plan, they can they can put it up and Okay. 
Okay. Right. I mean, I think it's I think it's good that the planning board is involved in this and is going to you know be in the adoption process because it needs to be integrated. In order so to it won't be a but it won't be a joint meeting. It'll be planning board will hear it. Okay. Um, I'll certainly let everyone know when you put it in. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. And we'll be maybe. Okay. Great. Anything else? Anybody else want to bring up? Before we I would be away for the next meeting, so um, Barbara will have to fill in. But. Great. I'll to entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, yeah. Second. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <clears throat>